Rachel and I are here at Tanner Electronics. It's in Farmer's Ranch, Texas, and it is a salvage electronics store. And this is one way to introduce you to all the wonderful little components that you can buy to make your electronic equipment. I mean, if you're into electronics, this place is like a candy store for a kid. And I just, you know, wanted to walk through and introduce you to all the components in a general way where you could see them all and get a more of an overview of components than we've given you already here in class three. Now, unfortunately, Tanner Electronics does not ship their components. You have to be here to buy them. But it's a great place to learn about your components. So let's go take a look in the store and see what we can find. Welcome to Class 3. I'm so excited that you're here. And we're at Tanner Electronics in Dallas, Texas, and we're going to go over every part in the store and get you acquainted with it. I have an assistant with me, Rachel McKay. Say hi, Rachel. Hello. She's going to help us show you the parts. Let's not waste any time. We'll continue right on down the road, and we'll start looking at various things. Let's see. What do we have on this? We have all kinds of things here. For instance, I'm, the first thing we're finding is a heat sink. Rachel, would you hold that where the camera can get a close-up? That's an aluminum heat sink, and its function is to dissipate heat off of a semiconductor device, and it allows the semiconductor de device to run without overheating, and you know, because transistors are not totally efficient. So if you didn't have a way of dissipating the heat of your semiconductor device, like a transistor, it would burn up. And so that's one of them. And, and Rachel, grab a few more and let's just look at the different kinds of heat sinks that we have here. There's a bigger one. <clears throat> this was designed to accommodate two transistors. And uh, that'd be like for an amplifier of some kind. And so there's a bigger heat sink. And grab another one. And let's take a look on down the way. There's another one. That's, a, that's one that would mount from the bottom. The transistor would mount on the bottom here or on the side. And there'd be another way of you know, mounting different, different types of transistors. Let's move on down here. And here's some other heat sinks that are smaller. Like right here, little bitty individual transistor heat sink. They all serve the same purpose, to dissipate heat to prevent the transistor from burning up. Let's look on down here. We have little connectors. These are individual little connectors. And what you do is you pull them apart and your wire can connect in the middle. They have all different kinds of connection types. Here's a buzzer. Now what's the function of a buzzer? A buzzer is just something that alarms on a, like a computer or something makes a beep. You apply power to it and it will make a tone or a beep. They have all different kinds of buzzers here. They have these buzzers, piezoelectric buzzer. See that? So basically what happens with the buzzer is you have uh, two inputs, one positive, one negative. When you apply the right voltage, it'll make a tone. You apply too much voltage, it'll burn out. They work on DC. Right down here, fans. Here's like your computer cooling fan. And uh, they have those in many different kinds of computer, computer power supplies. Again, these run on DC. It connects to the two little connectors right here on the side. Turn it around where he can see the, the one little connectors here. Again, you plug DC into that. Some of them run on AC, and the fan will turn. It will pull air through this uh, electronic component and keep it from overheating. All different kinds of fans. We have a whole section of fans here, different sizes. And so, you know, if you need to get a fan for your computer, this is a store like this is a good place to get one. Right here we have a whole bank of fans that are mounted on an individual array. And these would be like a one rack unit system and all these three fans would run together to pull air out of a computer or some sort of cabinet. Right over here on this side, we have capacitors. All of it just boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of capacitors. These capacitors here are electrolytic capacitors. We covered those in the class before, but you can see there's just tons of them. They're rated in breakdown voltage and the capacitance in farads. They have all different kinds, boxes and boxes of capacitors. Some of them are big, some of them are small. Here's like a bigger high voltage capacitor. This one is uh, 220 microfarad at 350 volts. 
be sure and put them in the right place. Okay, now we'll go back down here a little bit more. Um, here's some uh, big capacitors like motor. These are motor caps. These are for motors and you, you need, they need a, a capacitor to run. And so if you have a, a, like a motor and an air conditioner or something that just hums, usually these capacitors need to be replaced or even the compressor in your air conditioner needs a capacitor like that. Pick up, pick that great big one up over there. See, there's another, there's a larger one. And these actually usually have AC put on them. And here's another one here, right here, another motor start cap. Let's keep on going. Now over here, paper capacitors. Hold that where he can see that. Get a close up of that, will you? See that paper capacitor? Got that? Okay. And we have all different kinds. We have ceramic. Here's a, here's a film cap made by Panasonic. We get a close up of that. And we come on down. Here's a polypropylene film cap. Just another capacitor. Usually these are lower farads in the electrolytics. This is exciting, isn't it, Rachel? <laughs> okay, and we'll keep on working our way down. Here's an older axial film cap. Isn't that exciting? Look at that. Okay. Fun in the electronics store. You know, electronics store is like if you're into electronics, you're like a kid in a candy store here. We'll keep on going back. More capacitors, more capacitors. We're working our way down. Here, we're getting down to ceramic capacitors. Look how small these are, little ceramic capacitors. More capacitors. Here's another one. This is a better example of a ceramic capacitor. Look at that. Okay, this goes right back there. We'll keep walking back. Now what do we have here? Oh my. They're awfully small, aren't they? Let me find a bigger one. This is a resistor boxes and boxes of resistors and they work with a color code. You probably can't even see that with that with that. Let me put this back over here and find a big one. We want to make sure and put them back in the right boxes. Here's one here. Look at that. That's actually a capacitor again. We got capacitors down on the lower level. So let me find a resistor. I'm trying to find a big enough resistor. They're all little bitty resistors. Here's a bigger one, slightly bigger one. This is a half watt. That was an eighth watt we were looking at. See? Take a close up look at that resistor. Color code again. Boxes and boxes of resistors. And what do resistors do? Resistors are not perfect conductors. As a matter of fact, depending on the value, they can be more of an insulator than a conductor, but they're somewhere between an insulator and a conductor. They impede the flow of current. And so they regulate current flow, or they not, don't regulate it, but they allow current to be controlled in a circuit. Here's some bigger resistors right here. This is an 820 ohm, uh, two watt resistor. Got it? Okay. Put that back. You can actually get resistors on a, hold that up. See those resistors are on a um, feeder. They're all connected to um, this uh, holding paper, cardboard. And so you can either buy it like that. Sometimes they're for machines that do automatic uh, placing the resistors on a PC board, and they come in a roll like this. More resistors, more resistors. Now we're getting into 
some more powerful resistors. And we're moving on. Now here's some interesting stuff here. If you have a speaker, you know, and a speaker is something that converts electrical signals to compressions and rarefications of air molecules. Lots of the speakers that were made have foam roll, and the foam would tend to burn out, or not burn out, but wear out. And so if you had glue, you could actually replace your foam roll with a new piece of foam roll. And so what you do is you'd glue that to the edge of the speaker and the diaphragm of the speaker, and it would allow you to have a working speaker again. See, so that's, the, that's a foam roll without the speaker connected to it. Right here, here's a complete speaker diaphragm with the foam roll on it. So, you, you know, as long as you connect this part to your coil that's around the magnet, and, uh, and if the coil's still intact, you glue that on there, you glue this on around the edge, you can rebuild a bad speaker. How about that? And so depending on the size of the speaker, here's a bigger speaker here. Look, this is a, for a big musical instrument speaker. Look how big that is. Again, you just glue that onto the voice coil that's around the magnet, glue the edge, and you've repaired a speaker that's gone bad. Look at that, isn't that interesting? And that's only eight bucks, so you can fix the whole speaker for eight bucks. <clears throat> And uh, they have a little smaller, like here's a, the center part, if you want to cover over the center part of that big speaker with this little middle part here, you cover that over. Um, different kinds of wires, like here's rolls of wire by gauge and color, copper wire. Banks and banks of different kinds of wire. How about that? Okay. Um, more wire. And let's, oh, here's, now we're down to the speaker wire. See, they sell a big rolls of speaker wire. Different kinds of speaker wires. Depending on the amount of current you're gonna be pulling through it. <clears throat> we're back over here. And be, hold that gently. This is a musical instrument speaker. See that? It's one of those boom box speakers, I think. It's called a Super Q, but how much is that? This like it's not much here. It's like twenty-five dollars for that, or thirty-five dollars. But see what happens is this diaphragm moves in and out, pushing air in the front and the back. And if you have an enclosure around it, then you don't have the air running from the front to the back, and so then it improves the bass, the bass sound coming out of it. different sizes of speakers. Over here, we have speakers already built in the cabinets, or cabinets you can build your speakers in. Right here is another woofer. That's a woofer right here on the shelf. That is a 10-inch woofer. And turn it around and let everybody look at the magnet. See the big magnet on it? That's exciting. Oh. Here's a little bitty tweeter. It's a magnetic tweeter. It's uh, still got a voice coil, but it's got a real small little diaphragm. There's a tweeter. Why is it called a tweeter? Because it makes high frequency sounds. Why is it called a woofer? A woofer is called a woofer because it makes low frequency sound. This is a tweeter. This is a piezoelectric tweeter. Horn tweeter. This is a horn tweeter. Isn't that exciting? Okay. This is a transformer that's used to attenuate the signal going to a speaker, so it's like a volume control that you can mount in a wall. Some of those are for 48 volt speaker systems, some of are, are those are for uh, 8 ohm speaker systems that you have to be sure and match the kind of control to the kind of speaker you're using. This is a speaker out of a television set. It's a Zenith uh, television set speaker. It's oval, so it can not, so it won't take up as much space. Rachel, what do you think about that? Isn't that exciting? 
Okay. More speakers, more speaker wire. We have a whole box here of piezoelectric tweeters. And we go over here, more speaker wire, big old rolls of speaker wire. More speakers down this aisle. Let's go back down here. Okay, what have we got here? Power resistors. Look here. These are power resistors. Hold that, we can get a good close up of that. Can you read that, Rachel? 7823 TRW PW10. Yeah. But it says 270 ohms at 10%. That's the value. And that's a high power resistor. This is a power resistor, too, even though it looks like a transistor, it's a resistor right here. How strange is that? Here's an older style 0.018 ohm, 65 watt wire wound resistor. That's what that is. More of them, more power resistors, boxes and boxes. Here's one, here's another type of power resistor. All that basically is, is a roll of, of wire wound around a ceramic. Sometimes it's a spray of uh, some sort of resistance material on a roll of ceramic. Here's another one. That's a big power. And those will get hot sometimes when you put them on your printed circuit boards. You'll see after a few years, the printed circuit board boards look burnt around those resistors. Keep going around. Okay. Oh, we're getting into potentiometers. Now, potentiometers are variable resistors. This is a 25 ohm, 5 watt potentiometer. And the thing about a potentiometer is, if you go to the two ends here, the ones on the left and the right, that just is, is like a, a pure resistor. But the wiper arm is connected to the center one right here. And so if you connect between here and here, you will see any, 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 any ohmage between what the main, or the main ohms are, like then this one's 25 ohms, and then um, a zero depending on where you turn that knob on that potentiometer. Let me say that one more time. Hold that, I got that wrong. <clears throat> this is a potentiometer. And what we have here is we have two connectors on the edge, one on the right, one on the left. That, that will be the total resistance. And if you connect to the wiper arm, which is in the middle, to one of the sides, then what you can have is the total resistance, if it's all one direction, or zero resistance if it's all the other direction, or anything in between. Here's another example of a potentiometer. <clears throat> Same thing. Total resistance between here and here. Any resistance from the total resistance to zero if you connect between here and here, wherever you turn that center control. Okay. Here's an interesting one. This is a, a potentiometer with a switch on it. You see here, the potentiometer is right here, and then right down here we have an on-off switch. So this is for the old style radios and so forth where you'd turn the volume up and it would click, and that would turn the radio on. Okay, and we'll go back over here, knobs various kind of knobs that you use on your potentiometers. That's an old style knob there. <clears throat> How about that? That's like a 70s knob. And we're actually, now we're over here at crystals. This is the crystal. 
And a crystal has a function. The thing about a crystal is, it if you hit it with a power, or actually some of them just run on their own, it makes a perfect frequency. So we use crystals for transmitters or for things to establish a perfect frequency. And so you can look at these and it'll tell you on, on them what uh, frequency it usually is. Doesn't on this one. Okay. We'll keep boxes and boxes of crystals. And even more crystals. This is a complete oscillator here. It has a crystal in it, but it's also got a power input and it has a semiconductor in it to make a complete oscillator. Remember, an oscillator is a device that makes a periodic waveform over and over again, just keeps running. Okay, let's go back around and look down the other side here. Transistors. Pull that out where I don't get it mixed in. Look at this. That's an NPN transistor. And you can see it's got a little metal case and three pins coming out of it. You get a close up there? Okay. Okay. We'll move on down further. Here's another NPN transistor, but it's a power transistor that is built to be installed on a heat sink. Remember those heat sinks we looked at earlier? A, power, a transistor is like a switch or a valve. It controls the flow of electric current. And so that, that transistor is usually a big one, so it's usually using like an amplifier or something. So put it right there. There's many different kinds. Here's a different one also. See that? And turn it around where you can see the wires. How about that? You want to get a good, are you getting a good close up back there? Okay. Um, here is another power transistor, different case. It's a Darlington transistor. And again, it's designed to be mounted on a heat sink. Okay. More power transistors. Transistors, transistors. Here's some SCRs. Silicon controlled rectifiers. Hold that where he can see that. There you go. Isn't that exciting? All right, let's put that up. We're going around over here. Okay. Now these are toroid cores. Now what's a, to a toroid core? There's a toroidal Trans, um, transformer or a coil so you can take and wrap wire around this ceramic core or sometimes that's a, actually a ferrous core you wrap wire around it and you can make a transformer you can make a coil here hold that where he can see that and so you can make your own transformer all you have to do is realize that a primary and difference between the primary and secondary, the more windings on one side as compared to another determines whether it's a step down or step up transformer. So here's these cores to make your own transformers. Right here, here's a coil. That's just a coil of wire used in a radio. Hold that where you can see it. How about that? Okay. Fun in the electronics store. Here's another coil. How about that? Okay. We'll keep more coils. Coils, coils, coils. Some of these are PC mounted coils. Here's a coil that mounts on a PC board. It's just a coil of wire, and that one has a slug in it, a ferrous slug, and you adjust that, and that controls the inductance to a degree of that coil. Okay. You used to see these a lot in old transistor radios, these little coils inside those little uh, cases, and you could take a screwdriver and adjust them to set the frequencies of that coil. Okay. All right, connectors. Now here's just uh, screw type connectors. 
Or you can connect wires from one side to another. How about that? This is the whole section of connectors. Over here, we've got, grab, uh, there's those connectors that everyone's familiar with in wiring where you just put a, it's a wire nut. And so you put your two wires in, twist them together, twist that, and it will uh, connect both wires together. If you do it correctly, it doesn't have any trouble. Some of them are crimp connectors over here, more screw type connectors. That's what we have over here. Some of these mount on PC boards to allow you to connect to a PC board with uh, spade connectors. And over here on the other side, we have spade connectors, ring connectors, terminals. This is a uh, round ring connector. Some of them are spade connectors, bifilder spade connectors, and crimp connectors, every different kind box of DVDs pre-recorded okay they've got some power supplies here for their um, computers here's an idler wheel uh, motor it's got a big idler wheel on it some of them here's some gears that would mount on a motor Here's a stepper motor. A stepper motor has different inputs that allow it to just move uh, one increment at a time instead of just running all the time. You have to be feeding a signal to it to make it keep stepping and turning. You can put those up back over there. Let's see. That was just sitting on the shelf here. There we go. Here's another DC motor. Little 12 volt DC motor. You can make a robot with that. Strangely enough, some people buy these to make uh, the, what are those things? Tattoo pins out of those. All different kinds of motors. Here's an air pump on a motor. So if you're wanting to work with uh, pneumatics or something, there's a little pump for you. Um, more motors, more motors, more. Here's some pulleys, gears, uh, belts, um, and somewhere in the middle of this is a breadboard. Here's a complete breadboard kit where you can put your components in these little holes, and then you can build your circuit and test it before you uh, before you actually want to solder everything together. That's a breadboard. Over here, we have actually these little Euro cards, what they do is you can solder your components onto this and build a complete circuit on this card that already has copper on it and you can just put all your parts on it and run your little connections between the parts and have some sort of circuit. Okay, more motors over here. Switches, we're in the switch section. Here's a switch. Switch makes a connection or makes an open. There's many different configurations of switches like SPST, SPDT. Uh, it stands for single pole double throw, uh, single pole single throw. And that would just be like a double throw switch would have um, two connections on either side so you're actually opening and closing two circuits at once. Many different kinds of switches, both sides. Here's a little push button switch. There's a magnetic reed switch right here. Magnet moves near it, it causes it to open or close. Okay. Many different kinds of switches, switches galore. Here's a multi section switch. See, it has, you, you have all these different connections and you can actually connect one thing at a time and they could be many one things at a time. I think it's got like eight of them. So you have multiple connections. They used to use those back in the 50s to make circuits that were really complicated that you control with one switch.
right here fuses circuit breaker the function of that circuit breaker is when too much current flows through it is to disconnect the current flow so it won't overheat it protects the circuit from burnout so put that back there we have lots of different kinds of fuses here's the fuse holder here that's a, a screw-in type fuse holder you have a hole mounted in your chassis somewhere and you just put this in and then you put your fuse inside of it here's another fuse holder okay now here's some fuses right here see there's a little filament in the middle of that piece of glass and when too much current goes through it it burns out and protects the circuit all different kinds of fuses over here fuses 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 over here relays this is a relay a relay is a switch that is activated by a magnetic field and so what happens with this is when a current is passed through this coil it causes that switch to change and so a signal going into the coil pulls the switch over and breaks or breaks a circuit or opens a circuit or connects a circuit many different kinds of relays batteries here tons and tons of batteries this is a 12 volt battery that is a um, lead acid battery and this is actually a 6 volt battery and we have battery holders here for double A cells we have other battery, all different kinds of battery holders. All kinds of cables. Here's rolls of HDMI cable. And there's some batteries there. More power supplies. Here's some multi-pin connectors. Multi different kinds of multi-pin connectors. Here's your battery, your uh, cigarette lighter connector like you'd use in a car. All different kinds of power supplies like you'd use for your computer or whatever circuit you're wanting to use. Okay, and here's a transformer. Right here. See, it's got it. This is the primary here, the black and the white, and there's several secondaries on the other side. That transformer. <clears throat> here's a 24 volt little transformer. center tap transformer let's see what else we have there are all kinds of power supplies and transformers we've got more diodes here here's a bridge rectifier built into a case hold that Rachel let them look at it there isn't that exciting I mean some of this stuff if you really think about what you can build with it you can have a lot of fun building things and the basis of your power supply is having this kind of bridge rectifier to turn AC into DC you take a transformer like you have over here and then you turn 110 volts into like 12 volts you take the 12 volts and you connect it here to the bridge rectifier and then you take the output of the bridge rectifier and you feed it to some of those larger capacitors we looked at earlier and you've made yourself a power supply isn't that a thrill now let's look over here here's more diodes where did I pick this bridge right here. Yeah, I don't want to put anything in the wrong spot here's another here's a single diode here that's a power diode 
Here's another example of a diode right here. Okay, more diodes. Oh, LED displays, light emitting diodes. Here's a seven segment display. It can make any number between one and nine and zero. Here's a bank of seven segment displays. Right here, a bank of seven segment displays. We'll keep on going. We got all kinds of goodies here. In any electronic store, you're always going to find all kinds of tools. And this is their wall of soldering irons. And right here is a Weller soldering iron. And you'll see that it comes pre-tipped. And the little tip is for, the small tips are for PC boards, so you don't burn the boards. And so that's a typical handheld soldering iron that isn't part of a base station. Okay, we've got all the different kinds of adapters here. These are RF adapters. Some mount to cases, some mount on cases, some mount on PC boards, some mount on wires. Up here, this is a T. It's got a BNC male and two BNC females. Here's another T made of three BNC females. Here's a barrel that's a BNC to BNC. Right here is a BNC L, two different sexes. Right over here we've got several different kinds. It's like this is an adapter. These are all adapters. They change one type of connector to another. Here's an F to an F, but F male to F female. Here's an F male to female at a, that's an angle. It's an L shaped. Here's a B and C to F. Here's a B and C to RCA. A B and C to UHF. These are used in communication devices. Actually, an RCA to UHF, excuse me. <clears throat> Here's a F connector to uh, RCA. Here's an F connector to mini or 3.5 millimeter. Here's an F connector to UHF, an RCA to uh, mini or 3.5 millimeter, an RCA to F, an RCA to F but a different sex, R and then a B and C to an F, and this is a different sex on it than this one up here. We have uh, B and C to RCA, we have UHF to F, we have UHF to RCA. All different kinds. Right here, our F connectors like you'd put on your cables. Here's an assortment of UHF connectors up here. T's, barrels, connectors you'd put on your cables. Up here, more UHF. And over here, many um, connectors that would twist. And some of these are F connectors. Uh, some of these are um, what are these called? Twist stone, and that would be an F down here. We can buy F connectors that you put on your cables. If you have a coax cable, you put this little connector on there, and that allows you to connect a television to a VCR, television to a DVD player, or your antenna to your television, or FM radio, or whatever. And that's an F connector. All different kinds of F connectors and B and C connectors. And down here, we're still in connectors. These are Molex connectors. You actually have pins you put on your wires and insert in this plastic Molex connector. It allows you to connect many wires all at once. Um, Pre-wired connectors that would be on a, a JST jumper like you'd have on your PC board. And uh, let's see. Here's your panel mount connector like you'd use on your computer. All right? Okay. Trying to find something more interesting. Here's more Molex connectors over here on this side. Um, these are more of your AC panel mount connectors right here. You could build a computer if you had the what is this? This is a line filter that goes on a PC board. OK. 
construction boxes right here. You build your circuits in there. And what's that? That's an indicator. It's a lamp that goes on a panel. You've got them in different colors. Mm -hmm. Make blinking lights. Okay. More boxes, more boxes, more boxes. More different kinds of boxes. We've got an assorted item special right here. Now here's uh, different kinds of chemicals. Like right here is a contact cleaner. If you're having a bad connection, you can spray that on your connection. It'll clean the contact of a switch or something. It allows you to have better connection. Right down here is freeze spray. Freeze spray is there to allow you to uh, you cool a semiconductor device that's gone bad and it will start working once you freeze it so you can detect your bad component by freezing it sometimes. Okay, over here we've got all different kinds of audio connectors. Like right here, this is a quarter inch uh, female connector. This is a quarter inch male connector right there. We've got mini. Here's a mini. That's a mini. And that's got three connections on it. This would be like you use on a TV, little TV camera that allows you to have a video and two audios. That's a tip ring ring sleeve. When you go by, let's just look at this over here. At this one. This, on this quarter inch connector, this is a tip and that's a sleeve. If it has another connection in here, that's called a ring. And you just go, go by the number of rings. Uh, let me see if I can find one here that has multiple rings. Let's look. Well, I'm, I passed it up. There you go. That's a tip, tip, ring, sleeve, quarter inch connector. It's a headphone jack or a stereo connector. Right, typically this is right, this is left, the tip is right, the ring is left, and that's the ground. That's your headphone connector. Where'd that go? Right down here. And there's all kinds of adapters here that take you between. Like right here, this is an RCA splitter. And one male RCA to two female RCAs. Same thing here, just a little bit different configuration. Sometimes they call that an RCAY. Right here. Here's an RCA connector that is on a panel. It's got three channel or four three channels of stereo. Right here. XLR. This is an XLR male. And that's a four pin XLR male. Right here. Here's a three pin XLR right there. And that's a barrel. All different kinds of connectors over here. RCA stereo cables. Red is red is right, white is left. And that's a stereo connector cable to go between stereo channels, typically. We've got Ys. We've got more different kinds of panel mounts and connectors. Like here's a panel here. If you want to put a bunch of uh, XLR connectors on a panel, we can do that there. More RCA connectors. Rachel's excited. She's a Now here's a DVI connector like you'd use to connect your computer. And what this is is actually a DV, DVI to HDMI adapter because electronically DVI and HDMI are almost almost identical and so you can connect this up to your computer and then on one side it's a DVI, on the other side it's an HDMI and so you can actually take a signal from your computer on a DV, DVI output and run an HDMI monitor. <clears throat> right here. Let's look. All different kinds of speakers. All different kinds of little tools. 
and this is a distribution amplifier I think yeah this is a a video audio distribution amplifier it takes one video in and two uh, and audio in and makes four outs so a distribution amplifier is something that takes a signal splits it multiple ways here's a microphone different kind of flashlights USB hub over here telephone connectors lint remover I need that okay all different kinds of Molex like this is an RJ45 modular connector and you string your wire through it like we did one of our other classes and you make connections that can go from computer to computer to computer to network crimp tools banana plugs here's some gold banana plugs alligator clips that's for connecting one thing to another electronically hard drive enclosures you can put your own hard drive inside this enclosure and connect it up to your computer wireless mouse here's something real interesting this is a USB 2.0 to SATA Now, what this is is you buy this cable and it allows you to take any of your SATA hard drives and connect it up directly to your you know without like if you had an internal SATA hard drive you could plug it into this cable and plug it into the front of your computer with this power supply to run the, the SATA hard drive more RCA connectors USB connectors, extenders. Here is a USB card. Allows you to have more USB connections on some older computers. Go down here. IC sockets. If you have an IC chip, you can put it on these connectors. And that's actually direct pin to pin. Ribbon cable. Let's see, tools on one side. DC power connector. Here's a mini den connector. Six pin mini den. Here's a six pin Dan, not a mini. Here's a D sub connector. Here's a larger D sub connector. And even a larger D sub connector. Those are often used in computers. All kinds of tools. Take a look at the tools. Okay. You always got to have good tools when you're working with your electronic devices. Let's walk on over here. Here's all kinds of little PC boards and circuits that you can buy to build and do things with. <laughs> USB extension cables. Okay, um, more tools. 
Here's a wireless mouse. These are mice, all different kinds of mice. Cleaning brushes. DVD blanks. Wire management ties. Let's see. More tools, just all kinds of tools over here. Okay, here's a 15, it's actually a 15 pin D sub connector used for a monitor. 50, it's 75 feet long. So if you wanted to run your computer, computer monitor 75 feet away, you could do that for a display, like a display on a wall or something. All different kinds of pre made circuits. Like right here is one with all different kinds of light kits, mini kits. Everything from FM transmitters to AM radio receivers to stroboscopes. All different kinds of fun little circuits you could build. Power cords, power connectors, uh, Cat5 cables. All different kinds of Cat5 cables. Here's the long one, 100 foot Cat5 cable for connecting your computer to another computer or to a network. Okay, well I think that's it for our tour of the electronic store. Thank you for attending class three. I really appreciate you. Say goodbye, Rachel. Goodbye. <laughs>